We'll officially get going. There we go. Okay, you guys. Well, welcome to uh, this morning's webinar. We were having a little pre-webinar fun, and you'll notice uh, as part of the webinar, I'll be looking down at my computer. My computer is right down here, and I have a lot of notes. The camera is right there, and I'm staring at the camera right now. So if you see me looking down, that's what that'll be all about. Have a great webinar in store for you today. Mention to those who were on early that if you get up around Jackson, Wyoming in August, September, October, I'll be working on an off from here. My email, I'm pretty personal guy is Greg at realestatemavericks.com, G-R-E-G at realestatemavericks.com. If you're up this way, send me an email and Roseanne, my wife is standing right over here and we will cook you a nice home cooked meal up here. I've got a nice place up just a little bit south of Jackson. So to get started today, this is about why you should never charge 6%. I'm really serious about that. Um, and I'm going to go into that in great detail with you, why you should never charge 6%. So I made this, uh, this is a half hour webinar. I'm going to just dive through material. So what I'm going to do here is start a screen share and I have got all this material uh, outlined out for you. I'm going to take you through it. And if you would like an outline of this, so you don't have to take notes because I think you're going to see there's a lot of amazing material here. Just send me an email at greg at realestatemavericks.com or help at realestatemavericks.com and I will send you the entire outline. So here we go. Let me pop in a screen share again. I'll be looking down uh, as I go through my notes. So we should be in screen share mode. There we go. And let me pop this up to the screen. So there we go. And that should be good. So Jen, you're going to let me know if there's any problem with the screen share. I'm presuming there's not. So let's get started. Three reasons, three reasons not to charge 6%. Number one, it shows that you've given no thought to what you charge in relation to what you deliver. Come on, guys. I mean, that 6% has been around forever. That is totally boring. Uh, I mean, anybody, you say, oh, well, my commission is 6%. I mean, it, it just demonstrates right off the bat that you've given no thought, no creative thought to what your commission structure should be in relation to the value, your value proposition. Number two. In a competitive real estate climate where differentiation is critical, and come on, differentiation is critical with respect to any business. Uh, charging 6% it just brands you as one of the herd. I mean, do you really want to be one of the herd? Is that, is that really, when you wake up in the morning, do you think to yourself, hey, every line I see all day long, I think I'll go get in line. Everything I see that other people do, oh, I think I'll just do that. I mean, come on, that's no way to live a life. That's no way to run a business. And when you charge 6%, that's all you're sending the message is, oh gosh, I'm just one of the herd. What normal is, you are not. What normal is, you are not. And don't charge 6% because when you charge 6%, all you're branding yourself as one of the herd, you're branding yourself as normal. Don't do it. Number three, and I wanna ask you this, do you really think that charging 6%, regardless of how long it takes to sell a home, what manner the home sells, that that's the absolute fairest fee structure to your seller. Do you really think is that, is, are you that, I mean, do you lack any, do you lack the smart to come up with a fee structure that's better than 6%? Come on. I mean, you know, I've got a son, I've got three sons and a nephew, and one of my sons is not even in real estate, and I guarantee you, not even being in real estate, he could come up with 10 fee structures in 60 minutes that were better and fairer to sellers than 6%, and more importantly, he could come up with 10 in 60 minutes, and he's not even in real estate, that are more would be more profitable to him as a real estate agent. We're going to go over one today I think you're going to love. This is, just isn't about what you shouldn't do. This is about a fee structure. I'm going to show you a fee structure you're going to absolutely love. And then if you'd like it, I'm going to send you the outline. So look at the three different types of sales here. There's a co-broke sale. There's a your buyer, you sell your own listing, and there's a buyer referred by your seller. So I really look at fee structures as having those three different types of things, three different ways that buyers are procured. You procure the buyer. The seller, maybe the seller just has a friend. They procure a buyer or it's a co-broke sale. And I think every realtor ought to have a fee structure that reflects those three different buyer procurement methods, okay? So that's three reasons why you shouldn't charge 6%. Now, before we get into a fee structure that I think you're going to love, um, I wanna give you some important strategies that you need to think about with respect to any fee structure and things you should do before you even get in to your fee structure with the home seller. Strategy number one, put it in writing. It's right here on the screen, preferably in an impressive brochure. 
I found over 35 years that the nicer the brochure that I talked about me and business and had my fee structure in it, and towards the last 10 years of selling, I just had a brochure devoted purely to my fee structure, and you're going to see why in a few minutes, uh, that if you make that really impressive, the sellers, it looks like it's cast and sewn, and the sellers are going to be less likely, they're gonna be less likely to negotiate with you. So whatever it is, Whatever it is, get it in writing, put it in a nice form, make it in color, get it laid out by a graphic artist. That is that, that 50 or 100 bucks that it's going to take you to have it laid out and printed, it's going to make you tens of thousands of dollars over the year. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, this is a biggie. This is something nobody in real estate does. I got to tell you, you pay attention to this. If they're, um, I mean, there's so many good things in this short webinar today, but I'm going to tell you that. If I were to stop and I were to say, this is the total biggie. This is the one that nobody does. This is the one that'll set you apart. If you're asleep in the beginning of the webinar and you want to sleep through the rest of the webinar, this right here, add a buyer magnet to each component of your fee structure. That is something that is the total amazing big takeaway, the total amazing big takeaway to today's webinar. So what that's about, and you're going to see that. You're going to see that in action in just a few minutes when I present a fee structure to you. So each component of your fee structure should be supported with a reason, a reason why that component of your fee structure is designed to attract more buyers and that it's fair, that it's fair in light of the services provided, but mainly how it's crafted to attract more buyers. You're going to see this. You're going to like this when you see what I've done. You're going to, sellers are going to look at that, and that is going to be such a transformational thing for sellers to see how intelligent your fee structure is and that everything you've done is not just designed to be fair, but it's also designed to attract more buyers for them. So that is number two. Add a buyer magnet to each component of your fee structure. Number three, when you're presenting, right here on the screen, when you're presenting your fee structure, and I'm going to, you guys I'm sure can all see this, but I'm going to highlight it. When you're presenting your fee structure, I've written about this. If you go to uh, Greg Haig Huffington Post, just Google Greg Haig Huffington Post, and you'll see uh, several of my articles. And in, um, I, th I think it's the one where we need a Muhammad Ali in real estate, but it might be, I'm not sure which one it is, but it's one of those I really, and also on Tom Hopkins' blog, I wrote about that, how critical it is whenever you're presenting anything that's important in a listing presentation to take positions against tradition. You're not dinging other agents. You never do that. You know better than that. It makes you look bad. Number one, it's, it's classless. Uh, it's unethical and it makes you look bad. So you don't, you know, it's just like when I try to teach my kids and people around me never to swear. You know, people swear. I do it occasionally. But when you swear, you think, oh, well, that's kind of cool for the moment. But every time you say a swear word, it actually just demeans you a little bit. Well, it's the same when you criticize other people, but not when you take traditions against position, not when you take traditions against position. So, for example, you will take a position against the typical 6% commission. You will take a position against the typical 6% commission. You'll talk about just what I said before, how it makes no sense, how people just stand in the herd. How is it that real estate agents that have one year experience try to charge the same commission as real estate agents who have 20 years experience? How is it that when a home sells, if a buyer, the day, I'm sorry, if a seller, the day after you, you list their home, the sellers happen to mention to a friend and the friend says, oh my gosh, I've always loved your home. I would love to buy your home. So the seller says, well, great. Greg Hedge, my listing agent, give him a call. Should I still charge 6%? That's crazy. That would be so unfair. It'd be ridiculous. I haven't done anything. And the sellers call me. So you take that tradition against position. You point out to sellers, there are so many different scenarios that can come up that this ridiculous 6% that other realtors are charging, it just demonstrates that they've given no thought to it. They're just waking up in the morning, listening to enormous, normal stuff. Hey, memorize this, you know, use this little gimmick, pound on for sale by owners, pound on expireds. I mean, silliest thing to do, no way to build a real estate business. They're just going down that normal, normal path. And that's why most of them are going broke. Uh, you know, 1.2 million, million realtors 
do business pretty much the same way. That is their Achilles heel. That is your opportunity. It's why most of them are going broke. It's why of 1.2 million realtors, NAR members, and there are another seven or 800,000 aren't even a member, average earnings is only $44,000. If that isn't a clue to you, if that isn't a clue to you that you do not want to stand in line and not want to get in a herd, believe me, I don't know what is. Most all of them are going broke out there. So, and imagine that $44,000 average earnings, that is pushed up because the top 10% make decent money, which means probably if you take the 90% below the top 10%, they're earning like $18,000 a year, starvation mode. So you take positions against tradition, sellers are gonna love that. It's one of the most powerful things you can do on a listing appointment. Number three, you always start right here. Before you get into your fee structure, you always start by explaining your unique home selling process. You, you can't go on a listing appointment. Please, please guys, do not go on a listing appointment and just do the normal things. Oh, I advertise here and I do that and I do this. Just the normal things everybody else does with little variances. Uh, one of the core things I teach in my coaching, it's the program that was featured in Forbes magazine in 300 publications worldwide, is my 29 day home launch formula. All that is, I mean, I've laid it out for all the people in my, all the agents in my coaching program, just with infographics, amazing stuff to make sellers absolutely love it. But it's simply pre-marketing. You point out that this is, this is, for example, a unique home selling process. You take a tradition against position here. You point out to home sellers, isn't it ridiculous? Isn't it ridiculous that the real estate industry, most every realtor out there lists a home and throws it on the market like a grocer would throw a loaf of bread on a shelf. In other words, they list a home, they immediately toss it into MLS, they immediately just put up a sign, and then they run some other advertising, and if the home doesn't sell, they blame the home seller because the price is too high. I mean, that will really resonate when you say that with home sellers. Their head will be going up and down like that. Then you talk about Apple and Tesla and all the top big Fortune 500 companies that use intelligent, pre-marketing strategies to build anticipation, build excitement, get buyers all hyped up. This is not a pocket listing. This is using other realtors, giving other realtors a chance before a home is an MLS, before a home, uh, home has a for sale sign on it, to call their buyers, get their buyers all excited about a private opportunity to see a home before it goes in MLS. That gets buyers in a higher price frame of mind. You point all these things out. I've got this all laid out. And today isn't about my home launch formula, but I've got this all laid out. I'll do a webinar someday just on the advantages of pre-marketing. Uh, I mean, it, it, it well may sell the home, and if it does, it'll sell it at a higher price. But if it doesn't sell the home during whatever the pre-marketing period is, it's at least going to give the seller a really good quantitative indication of what the list price should be so that when it comes time to put it in MLS, two weeks later, four weeks later, whatever it is, maybe you can get the seller to put it in MLS, put it in MLS at a more realistic price. Because remember, one of the key things, I've said it for 35 years, that you will say that will really wake sellers up to overpricing their home is time on the market tracked in MLS. Days on the market in MLS is acid. It is death to the price of a home. And that's why it is so critical. Home sellers all the time put homes in MLS. You just remember this and you tell your home sellers this, they put them in too high saying, hey, I don't care how long it takes. If it doesn't sell at this price, I'll just reduce the price. Well, they will end up taking a lower price than they would have if they priced it right up front every single time because a buyer is going to pay a lot less for a home with 300 days on the market versus three days on the market. Same home, same price, same everything. Just days on the market is going to kill the price of a home. And so consequently, you point that out to home sellers, why it's so important that their home is priced right up front, why your unique home selling process, that in this case, your pre-marketing, why that is may end up selling the home, but at least is going to help the sellers understand during that time, see what buyer reaction is, see what other agents reaction is, and to help them make a more intelligent decision before they go into MLS. So before you get into your fee structure, you definitely want to talk about your unique home selling process. I just used our pre-launch formula, the 29 day home launch formula for all of you in my coaching. You of course know it well. I've used that as an example. Next, before you get into your fee structure, you want to explain three reasons why you and you alone are the single best agent to sell their home. This is different. In one case, you're explaining your process. You're selling a product. Do you understand that, guys? You're selling a product. Even if they didn't like you, they're going to want you because of your home selling process. 
Now you're going to get into you. Most realtors only sell them. They don't have a unique product. They don't have a process. You know, I call it most every realtor out there is just selling a shinier version of a Ford, a shinier version of a Ford. You want to have a Mercedes. That's your unique home selling process. Then you want to talk about you. You want to talk about you. Why you and you alone are the single best agent, the single best agent on the planet to sell these people's home. And one example is knowing the neighborhood better. No, I don't mean just like kind of knowing the neighborhood. I mean really knowing the neighborhood better. I mean knowing it like amazingly because what you're going to tell home sellers, and it's true, is that, and no agents know this stuff. No agents know this stuff. Buyers buy three things. They buy livability. You can see it right here. This is in this bullet point right here, guys. I'm sorry. I just tend to get a little excited here. They buy livability, they buy badge of honor, and they buy neighborhood. Now, livability is actually the home, just like I'm up here at my ranch in Wyoming, and uh, this is the livability of this home. And uh, for those of you that don't know, that didn't tune in early, uh, you may have known about six weeks ago I broke my leg. It's on the heel right now. This is a very broken leg, unfriendly house, <laughs> livability-wise. But uh, So I wouldn't be buying this if I were going to have a broken leg forever. Uh, but bottom line is they buy livability. Everybody knows that. Badge of honor how it's going to impress their friends. Uh, people clearly buy that. Anything that they buy, a car, the clothes they dress, their home, they buy a badge of honor. And you want to remember that when you're a listing agent. But here's the one I'm really referring to now when I say know the neighborhood better. And you'll explain this to home sellers. People buy a neighborhood. They buy a community. And the better you as the listing agent are, either with other agents or directly with buyers, it pointing out all the benefits of the community. I don't mean just the wider community. I don't mean just how close is the Starbucks or the Whole Foods. I love to shop at Whole Foods. I'm, I hate shopping. I'm so much not a shopper guy, but I love buying my, old, my, my own stuff at Whole Foods, one of my favorite things. In fact, I did a video of me the other day with my broken leg when we were back in Arizona. I got to Whole Foods and I got on one of the first time I've ever done this on one of their electric handicap things. <laughs> I was driving around Whole Foods excuse me, and videoing myself. I was having a good time there. And uh, just going to remember, you know, all the people who are handicapped and have broken legs and have anything else in the future to feel, you know, that much more sensitive towards their needs. In any case, getting back to this, you're going to talk about even the next door neighbors. You're going to talk about the next door neighbors, the people right around there, the kids, the dogs, all the advantages of living in this neighborhood. Well, the point is, that's just one. I talk about this in my videos, in my coaching, my training. You want to be prepared to make those sellers say, oh my gosh, I would never, I would never ever list with any other agent. This agent is so smart. They understand how to sell homes. So that you want to do before your fee structure as well. Next, you want to start your listing presentation uh, before you get into any of this with your personal backstory. This is something I teach in my coaching. I actually give several themes. I help my coaching students develop a personal backstory. It's so important after you've done the walkthrough to sit down at the table and before you get into you know, your, your unique home selling process, before you get into why you and you alone are the single best agent to sell their home, you want to definitely talk about your personal backstory, which is essentially why you are in real estate, why you are in real estate other than just to make a commission. And there are certain backstory themes. You want to take what's really true, but you plug them into like a, you can see here, a loss and redemption um, theme, an epiphany theme, uh, a curation theme. This can be incredibly powerful. And maybe I'll do a webinar sometime. If you guys would like, just email me, Greg at Real Estate Mavericks. There's a bunch of you would like that. I could do a whole webinar just on how you develop an amazing, compelling personal backstory that will make people just say, before you even get into your official listing presentation, say to themselves, oh my gosh, I love this guy. I really want to do business uh, with him. So that's uh, that you want to do also before your uh, fee structure, before your fee structure. And then don't forget your personal brochure. Uh, again, I have done so many seminars on personal brochures. I do audios and boxers on it. In fact, um, in fact, as a special gift to any of you out there, if you would like that are not in my coaching, uh, if you, all the people in my coaching have access to all my websites with samples of personal brochures. If you would like, uh, I did an audio the other day. I do Voxer coaching. That's uh, same day response, every day audio coaching uh, so that my agents get a coaching message every day, all my coaching students. If you would like my Voxer audio on how to develop an amazing personal brochure along with a couple of samples, just email me, greg at realestatemavericks.com. My team's going to kill me for this because my email box is just going to be like totally full and just put personal brochure in that. 
plus any question you have or anything else. And as I mentioned before this, um, uh, you know, if you have any other requests, just do that as well. And I will, I will send you a link to that audio. You're going to love that. Um, so the idea of the personal brochure, and I teach this in my videos, is you have that pre-delivered before you arrive on the listing appointment. And you insert, uh, you have an insert sheet that has testimonials, not necessarily from clients, just personal ones. You could get 30 or 40 of those overnight about what a good person you had, a good life you've, you've led, a good father, good mother, a good husband, whatever. You just want to have that in there along with a personal gift. And I talk about that in my videos. And what happens? is the home sellers will look at your personal brochure. They'll look at your personal brochure, obviously before you arrive on the listing appointment, and they'll start to get to know you. They'll start to like you. They'll start to even trust you. And then when you arrive, it's the first thing they're going to ask you about. It's such a wonderful way to arrive on a listing appointment where you've not previously met the home seller. So you want to do that. These are, uh, I just uh, threw into Evernote here. I'm just going doing, doing this with Evernote this morning. I threw, uh, uh, this is a personal brochure by uh, one of my agents. I've got tons of these samples. Here's one by Richard Howe, another one of our rock star Maverick agents uh, with Keller Williams. He did a really nice one. Richard's an amazing guy. He is his story, his, his story with respect to him and uh, the dogs and some of the things he's done in that arena are really heartwarming. And you can see uh, he's here with his wife and his daughter. And uh, so the personal brochure is about you. And again, I've got a whole outline. So that you want to have a personal brochure. So now, to the meat of the seminar here, of the webinar here, and I wanna stay right on track and try to end this in about 10 minutes, like I promised. Uh, this is, with everything I've just said leading into it, this is a an example of a profitable fee structure sellers absolutely love. So first of all, and again, I talk about the 6%. Don't charge 6%. What I'm always saying is, charge more, charge less, charge different. Just don't charge six, the normal old 6%. And I mean, that's how I started this thing. I mean, because it, I, for those of you that came in late and I gave three reasons to start this webinar, you know, it just makes you one of the herd. It shows you've given no thought to what you're charging. I mean, it's just like, hey, I just got in line and I'm doing what everybody else is doing. So now, here is a fee structure. You can adjust uh, these numbers. I just used these numbers up here because a lot of my agents are loving this. I've worked with a lot of the agents I coach to develop this. So this is a four-part, a four-part, fee structure, and it starts with 5.8% if the home sells Cobro, and you offer a 3.3% Cobro commission. Now, remember I said that with every component of your fee structure, you're going to have uh, a component. With every part of your fee structure, you're going to have a component that you can demonstrate to the home sellers will attract more buyers. I call that a buyer magnet component. So, what you do, you start. If the home sells co-broke, and this will all be laid out in a nice brochure, like I just said earlier, if the home sells co-broke, then it's 5.8% if it sells co-broke, but you're offering a 3.3% co-broke commission, which is more than the typical 3%. I know in Denver, it's only 2.8%. Uh, in most areas, it's around 3%. And the, why are you going to do that? You're going to do that to demonstrate to the home sellers right down here that you're making their home stand out in MLS. It's not that it's so much money that an agent's going to say, oh my gosh, I got to sell this home. I'm making like $100,000 more. But it just makes it stand out. It makes buyer's agents feel good. And it's a really good selling point with sellers to point out that you're doing that. So still, if the home sells co-broke, you're not, you're doing okay. Three, what is it? 5.8 less 3.3. I think you make what? 2.5% on the list side. And that's not so bad. You'll see all the other tweaks here. This is such a profitable fee structure. Sellers love that because you're slightly, in their mind, discounting below the 6%. You're putting a buyer magnet in it. And, uh, and you could do this, notice in point two, or you could do this for the term of the listing or during the pre-marketing period in the first 30 days in MLS uh, so that you could then reduce the Cobra down to 3% and you on the list side would pick up an additional three tenths of a percent, which would take you almost to what three point, or I'm sorry, two point eight percent, almost the three percent that it, that you'd probably love to earn on the list side. So you could just do it for a temporary period, and if it sells that quickly, so what? So you could do it that way. And again, this three point three percent buyer magnet is a strong argument why sellers should list with you. You point out that you're taking money out of your pocket to make, you're already offering a slightly discounted above, below the 6% commission. And then in addition to that, you're taking another three tenths of a percent out of your pocket to do what? To bring it more to the attention of buyer's agents and make them more likely to sell it. So that's a really nice one component of a fee structure. Okay, component two. 
4.7%. Again, you can make these numbers whatever you want if you sell the home to your own buyer. That is, you find a buyer through your ads, et cetera. And what's the buyer magnet? 1.5% cash back rebate. This is something I can't believe so many agents are missing that they're not doing, that they're not putting in their advertising. This is legal in 40 states, so check your state. It's going to be legal in the rest, because if you go to the Justice Department website, just go into the Justice Department, US Justice Department, and Google uh, buyer rebates, uh, real estate buyer rebates. They are pounding on the 10 states that aren't, haven't let yet made it legal, saying it's so ridiculous, so uncompetitive. Why should a real estate agent, a listing agent, not be able to provide an incentive to a buyer in order to buy a home through them? And so in 40 states, it's perfectly legal. So uh, the idea is you offer that. And again, if you take 1.5 from 4.7, that is what, 3.2 or something? Yeah, 3.2. So you're making a little bit more than a normal list side commission. You said, great, but great, then I got to work with a buyer. Heck, I would rather work directly with a buyer any day than a co-broker. I mean, co-brokers are great, but at least if I have a buyer, I can communicate directly with them. I'm much more likely to make a sale uh, on my listing if I have control of the buyer as opposed to, have to go, having to go through another agent. So I would rather have the buyer in the best interest of my seller in my best interest as well. And I'm happy to make 3.2% all day long selling my own listings to my own buyers. I mean, make a fortune doing that. So, you know, if you, if you doubt the power of the, of the rebate, of the 1.5% rebate, just go to Redfin. You guys know Redfin. They offer 1% back, and they have the most consumer traffic website of any real estate firm in the world. Keller Williams, great firm, Keller Williams, 130-some thousand agents. Redfin, only, I think, a couple 3,000 agents. Yet Redfin's website gets multiple times the traffic, consumer traffic, of Redfin's website, I'm sorry, of Keller Williams, Redfin's website gets multiple times the traffic of Keller Williams' website. Why? Because they offer about a 1% rebate back on each home. Go in there. It is a powerful weapon, and you, you guys should be using it. So, um, and by the way, side note, I'm not going to get into that now. Um, I really believe that over time, buyer agents are going to get squeezed out of the business like travel agents. I'm not saying that buyer agents don't provide a valuable service. They provide an incredibly valuable service. My wife was my buyer agent for 35 years, one of my many buyer agents. She was my very first one. She was amazing with buyers. It's just that I think as uh, more and more agents, and they will start offering rebates to buyers, listing agents do, to buy directly with them. I think more and more buyers are going to choose those rebates over being represented by a buyer's agent because right now it's free to the buyer. So just something to keep in mind why you should be a listing agent. And, uh, and again, that 1%, 1.5% buyer rebate, that's the buyer magnet. That's a strong reason why sellers should list with you when you point out to them that you're reducing your commission to 4.7% if you find your own buyer and you're taking 1.5%, this is big you guys, 1.5% out of your pocket, 1.5% out of your pocket out of that 4.7% to attract more buyers to their home. And here's the biggie. This is another huge takeaway. Buyers always have in their mind what they figure is like the good deal on a home. And you see, when you're giving them like on a $400,000 home, you're giving buyers a $6,000 check out of your pocket at closing. Imagine talking to a seller on a listing presentation and saying, you know what that does? That really essentially, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, adds $6,000 to your bottom line because that buyer always has what is a really good deal and they're going to factor that rebate in when they're negotiating for your home and when they fall in love with your home. That is a powerful, powerful, powerful tool to use on a listing presentation. I can't believe more agents don't do that. And then lastly, 2.5% of the sellers, this is the fourth component, find their own buyer without an agent. Um, you know, I'm a real believer in letting sellers, if they want to, hold their own open houses. And uh, they can be, you team up with them, there's your buyer magnet. The buyer magnet it is that you guys working as a team are likely to attract more buyers because you can't be there every day. You don't even want to hold open houses. You give them the sign, give them the brochures, they're not selling their own home. They're just letting people come through, giving them a brochure and referring them to you. Multiple advantages here. Number one, wouldn't you for you? Wouldn't you love to have all your home sellers doing this? Wouldn't you love to list home after home, have all your home sellers hold their own home open, find their own buyer, flip that buyer over to you, and you sell them all day long two and a half percent? My God, you make a fortune. You can just build a business just around that. That's so powerful. Number two, they're going to send you a lot of buyers who are not going to like their home. You might end up with your buyer agents, the buyer agents team you build around you because I'm teaching you, all the agents in my coaching, to be listing agents. You'll surround yourself with buyer agents. Um, and in doing that, and like, like, for example, one of my, I was just talking to one of my agents in Florida, uh, Robert Deenan, the other day, he has uh, several buyer agents 
uh, working around him. He's, he's just doing so well. So proud of you, Robert, if you're listening in today. And his buyer agents each are averaging about 45 transactions a year. So imagine the money Robert's making in addition to all the homes he's listing, all these buyer agents he has, each one averaging about 45 sales a year and he gets a share of that commission. That's what you call building business. That's what you need to be doing. And uh, with buyer agents in a way to fuel them with buyers is to have all the sellers you list out there holding their own home, homes open flipping you all the buyers and giving them two and a half percent commission. You can see that what you're doing is you're essentially crediting them that like the Cobro commission plus adding a half a percent spiff. Uh, they're going to love that, love that, love that. Uh, it's your buyer's magnet. And as I say, it's another strong listing argument. So powerful, powerful, powerful. This is uh, the four part fee structure that you might consider. Again, if you'd like the notes on this, just email me, Greg at realestatemavericks.com. Now there's one last little thing I add to this and that is a 10% list side bonus if you sell the home during the pre-market period. Now I think that's really cool because what it shows is it shows the seller that during your pre-marketing, and I talked about that earlier, and you're going to do pre-marketing, if you sell the home, you get a 10% spiff on your list side commission. So, and I mean, when you, I say if you sold the home, if it sells, sells co-broke, however it sells, whatever your commission is, you get a three tenths of a percent, you get three tenths of a percent spiff. And you point out, what's the magnet here? The buyer magnet is that this gives you an incentive. Like if you're using, if you're in my coaching and using my 29 day home launch formula, which is a pre LMS marketing period, you point out to the home sellers that this gives you a double, triple incentive to just undo all the stops, uncork everything, put in all the effort, spend all the money to do what? To try to make that extra 10%. So again, what you're doing is you're giving yourself a spiff and showing the sellers, this is powerful, that you're giving yourself a spiff to sell their home faster because a faster sale, I talked about this earlier, you guys know this, a faster sale always, almost always leads to a higher price because time on the market is death to the price of a home. You point that out to home sellers. So this is a powerful, powerful component to a powerful, powerful component to any listing presentation. And again, you be sure down here, be sure to point out that a sale during your pre-marketing period is a zero MLS day on the market sale. And that is always, always, always going to mean top dollar, top dollar for the home seller. Okay, well to finish up today, and I'm only running, oh, this is great, I started about two, three minutes after and I'm only like a minute behind right now. So the, remember, I'll finish up with a few cool things. Commission amounts are yours to decide, but it's nuts not to have a creative fee structure with these buyer magnets. That's a huge takeaway for today. Whatever your fee structure is, get it in writing, cast it in stone, make it look beautiful, have each one have a buyer magnet. Now, connect with if you would like to get any questions answered, even those of you not in my coaching, today and tomorrow, I'm gonna to answer any question you have. I'm gonna do it personally. You're just gonna hear me by voice. Download, it takes two minutes, an app called Voxer, V-O-X-E-R. Download it to your smartphone. I am Real Estate Maverick on Voxer. I'm also Real Estate Mavericks plural, but don't connect with the plural because I don't check that. I just tied that up so I had that too because our company is Real Estate Maverick. So connect with me, Real Estate Maverick, and just then send me a little walkie-talkie audio. It's just a walkie-talkie. It'll show up on my phone, a little recording, and it'll say, hey, Greg, this is so-and-so. I listened to your webinar. It's absolutely amazing. I just loved it. It was so cool. Or it stunk. I was bored, but I do have a question. Whatever it is, just give me some input, and then ask me your question. Today and tomorrow, any questions that come across on Boxer, whether you're in my coaching or not, I will personally answer them back to you. It can be about anything real estate, anything legal, anything, anything, anything you think I can help you with. And if you like, you can let me know and I'll put you in my Boxer coaching groups. I'll explain to you what that is for a month for free where you can get my daily coaching message. I think you'll like that on Boxer. So download Boxer if you have any questions. Download Boxer anyway. You're going to love this and connect with me and say hello. If you'd like to learn more about my coaching, you'd like to have, you know, the typical, all the coaching companies do it. It's so boring. I can't believe I do it. It's like me running with the herd. I got to change this because every time I look at that, I say, why are we doing 30 minute Q&A coaching calls when everybody out there does these Q&A coaching calls when everybody looking at that saying, yeah, I know all they're going to do doing the 30 minute coaching calls, try to sell me on their high buck coaching. Well, that's not what we're going to do at all, promise you. But if you'd like a 30 minute Q&A coaching call to learn about some of our strategies, uh, just go to Real Estate Maverick, sign up. There's a form there. I'd like to show you to finish up today one quick thing. This is uh, this is just a couple. I was a couple of our rock star Maverick agents, Shawnee and Aunt Ani, uh, I'm sorry, Chantel and Ani Abbas uh, in, uh, in Phoenix. 
And uh, boy, isn't that just super cool. You can see this little image they did of themselves. Uh, I love uh, I love our Maverick agents. And if you don't know, uh, if you guys are not in our Maverick coaching, at least get to know our Maverick agents. They are so cool. By the way, these guys, uh, Chantel and Ani, were telling me the other day, they've closed 42 deals. This was as of last week so far this year using our strategies, 42 deals, and they're shooting for 100. Uh, they're shooting to do a hundred deal year, close a hundred transactions this year. And lastly, I'm going to finish you finish with this. This is just a little personal thing. Um, you never know when you're doing something for the last time. The one minute story is I was having dinner with a friend of mine. His name is Bruce uh, about a couple of years ago, two, three years ago. And Bruce said, um, Greg, are you going on that motorcycle ride with us down to Cabo? Because I'm an avid pilot and motorcyclist. I've motorcycled Africa, Europe, all over the world. I love to do that. By the way, I didn't break my leg motorcycling. I can't believe this. I fly, I do all this stuff, mountain bike race, and I broke my leg falling down the stairs. I mean, boy, does that just show you. In any case, he said, you're going down on that Cabo, Cabo ride with us. And I said, you know, Bruce, I just can't. I'm too busy. And he leaned over and he whispered in my ear. He says, uh, Greg, do you ever see a sign? And I took this photo when I was riding my motorcycle up in northern Michigan. He said, did you ever see a sign on the side of the road that said mystery spot? And this, by the way, I saw the sign after Bruce told me the story. And I just pulled over and had to, sh had to take this photo. And he said, did you ever see a sign on the side of the road that said mystery spot? Go back. And, you know, you thought to yourself, boy, that looks pretty cool. I should check it out. But I'll do it next time. But I will do it next time. Well, you know, he said, Greg, I want to tell you something. With respect to this ride to Cabo, with respect to other things in your life, he said, when you're kissing Roseanne, when you're hugging your sons, when you're taking a trip, when you're talking on the phone to a friend, he said, I want you to know. You never know when you're doing something for the last time. When you see, the next time you see that mystery spot sign, the next time you see anything like that, you take the 15 minutes. You don't be so busy. You go down that road. You check it out. And here was the big takeaway. He said, the thing you need to start doing also is everything in your life, your real estate business, your coaching, your wife, your kids, your friends. He said, every time you're with them, every time anything happens, every new client you meet, you need to appreciate it that much more because you never know when you're selling your last home. You never know when you're listing your last home. You never know when you're giving the last hug to someone you love. Well, you guys, I'm gonna go off a screen share here. There we are, back at the ranch. Have a huge turnout today, thank you. Once again, if you have any questions, Greg at realestatemavericks.com. Thanks for tuning in. Next Wednesday's webinar, same place. Uh, if you'd like to be invited uh, to the webinar, I think you're already on the list, but if you'd like to be invited again, Greg at realestatemavericks.com will send you an invitation. You are going to love next Wednesday's webinar. I am going to cover something that is going to be transformational in real estate. So it's 30 minutes. If you'd like to tune in, tune in, let us know. I'll finish by simply saying what I always do. I salute the Maverick in you. Bye-bye, you guys.